Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Energy insecurity was top of mind when organized business met with President Soro Maposa this week. Taryn Screamer joins me to discuss what business wants done to address the constraint and how the president has responded. Hi Terence. Hi Simone. Business Unity South Africa has reiterated that inadequate electricity supply is a significant risk for business and the South African economy. Yes, I think they're labelling it, as is government, the number one risk to the economy and our, our growth trajectory, which we know we are flatlining in that regard, and also ESKIM being the largest fiscal risk to the government's balance sheet. So th we know that business, and especially large businesses represented by BUSA, um, you know, they're the ones that are leaned on very heavily during periods of load shedding. They asked to cut up to 10% of their demand during that period. And and when it gets to levels of sort of stage six, even more, and we saw that the mining industry had to not send people workers down during that period uh, in December when we went for the first time to cut t 6,000 megawatts uh, through rotational load shedding because it was just too much of a risk to do that. So it is uh, undermining growth, it's undermining profitability and very much undermining investment uh, and business confidence. And without investment in this economy, we're not going to grow. And without growth, we're not going to employ more people. And without employing more people, uh, you know, the social instability issues associated with that are going to rise. So yes, it's reiterated as the number one risk and the delegates to the business economic in Dubai, about 400 business people, there was a specific work stream that focused on energy security. What proposals have been made to help address the problem? I think the main proposal is that uh, we can't see Eskom as the only game in town. Uh, Eskom, in many ways, is not the solution, it's the problem. And we know that because the Eskom plant, the old plant, has been run too hard for too long and is under maintained, the coal plant. Uh, the, and there's a view that we're going to have to do more maintenance on that plant, which is going to lead to a gap uh, of supply versus demand. Um, then there's the issue of the new plant, which is underperforming massively versus its nameplate, and is going to be also require time to fix that if it's ever going to be fixed, and that's going to lead to a gap between supply and demand. Therefore, the solution is already being proposed is that we have to look beyond Eskom, and uh, one of the immediate uh, low-hanging fruits in this regard is self-generation. A number of households, but especially companies, large mining entities, factories, uh, commercial businesses, shopping malls, are able to self-generate. Um, and they want to do it at a larger scale than what is currently allowed for um, in the legislation and the regulation. So at the moment, if you sub one megawatt, you just have to register with NERSA, but even that registration process has become fairly mired in delay. If you're above one megawatt, you actually have to license that facility. And if you're above 10 megawatts, there's a, there's a bit of a gap. There's a policy gap in terms of how you can proceed. So there is co there's a lot of potential to do sub uh, 10 megawatts, but there's, because of the regulatory delays in getting your, either your registration done with NERSA or your license, there is just uh, a reticence. As well as there's, there's a, um, you know, there's, it's an expensive investment, so you have to make sure that your pencil is sharpened and you have to make sure that you are going to get a return. But business is making it clear, as in the mining industry is saying at least 500 megawatts of self-generation capacity is pent up and ready to go, but a lot of it is bigger than that 10 megawatt. So they need almost a stroke of the pen uh, from the, the, the energy minister to change the, uh, the regulation so that they can start you know, investing at that scale. Um, and, and then uh, sort of un encumbering them around the so sort of red tape uh, around the NERSA process, which is taking far too long. So that is, is the lowest hanging fruit. And then, you know, obviously allowing RPPs at the utility scale to enter the system at a mar much more uh, aggressive rate would be the other solution. And that requires government to move ahead much more uh, speedily with procurement of mostly renewable energy but also other conventional energy and get those procurement processes going. Instead, what we've seen is that uh, RFI has been released for 3,000 megawatts of emergency supply, 
that process is going to take uh, the response for an RFR, that's just information, no procurement, no sort of firm offers is going to take until the end of January uh, to for people to make submissions. The RPP office has then indicated it's going to take them another month to evaluate that. So we won't really see any procurement happening until February or, or into March. Now, that doesn't sound very emergency or urgent, but that's the process we, uh, that is underway. And therefore, the self-generation is, is something that can go ahead in parallel. And there we have to release, uh, um, unencumber that uh, market through uh, regulatory and legislative reform. How has the president responded? The president responded by saying that he and government is now willing to fully embrace self-generation as part of the solution rather than part of the problem. There's a sort of resistance to self-generation over the years uh, because it's seen as uh, corroding and eroding both ESKIM and municipal revenues. But I think the penny, uh, as, the uh, as the president said, has dropped for him and that self-generation is part of the solution here yeah, of private institutions that are willing to finance and build their own generation capacity and close the immediate gap that is prevailing in South Africa. And basically, we just need to, uh, there has to be a process of enabling that. So that was a very firm response, as well as th there was, there's obviously this RFR that I mentioned for emergency power, power um, supplier that can come in various forms and will be interesting to see what responses uh, uh, arise. But then the, the, there was also a commitment to the mantra of implement, implement, implement was the mantra that came out of this uh, engagement with business. And I suppose in this case it's all about implementing the integrated resource plan. It's the roadmap. It shows us what we need to do up until 2030 shows that there's going to be a gap, um, an immediate gap of at least 3,000 megawatts. Now, if Eskom ups its maintenance, that gap grows, grows to 5,000 megawatts. So basically, we need to get into the implementation phase. Sadly, we haven't seen that yet, but I think that if the penny has dropped on self-generation, hopefully it's also dropped that we need to start procuring at a much faster pace uh, private capacity because Eskom doesn't have the wherewithal financially to build any more capacity. Its focus has to be on fixing the old plant and getting the new coal-fired plants operating to nameplate. And that's really where its attention has to be. And uh, hopefully, with the president says, saying the message that they're ready to implement, we'll start seeing implementation of the RP. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.